Hello, parents and future Burnaby South students, members of the Burnaby South community. Uh, thank you for joining me on our grade seven parent um, presentation. Um, looking forward to having you here and welcoming the class of 2026. So just an overview of, well, it may not be evening in your time, but uh, you can be watching this whenever you want, as this is virtual. But the uh, this is just an overview of what I'm going to be talking about in our presentation today. And uh, my name is Colin Chow. I'm one of the counselors here at Burnaby South. And uh, yeah, I look forward to meeting you. So this is just a visual overview of the administrators at Burnaby South looking smiley and happy and, and also looking forward to meeting you and having you part of our community. As an overview, this is what Burnaby South is like. Uh, we are an 8 to 12 school. Uh, we are Burnaby South and the BC Provincial School for the Deaf. Um, this year we have just under 1600 students and we had 252 grade 8s and next year we're looking at about probably a similar number as well. Uh, the next numbers just represent just the number of you know, adult staff professionals here to support students and their learning and their success during their time at Burnaby South. We are a top AP school, um, so academics are certainly something that we are well known for in addition to our ACIP programs, uh, district programs as fitness instructors and computer network technician programs. We are very, very involved in the community, both the school community and outside the community uh, with clubs and councils. And uh, as I mentioned, you know, sports and the arts is also something that Burnaby South is very well known for. So as you may be aware, we are uh, in the middle of a pandemic. <laughs> and so like all high schools in Burnaby, we are operating and have been operating on a quarter system. Uh, which means that our students are taking two classes uh, for about 10 weeks and then they transfer to a different set of two classes for 10 weeks and so on and so on over four quarters. Each class is about two and a half hours in length. Teachers uh, usually uh, allow for about a 15 minute break. Somewhere in that time we do stagger it uh, to have sort of uh, safety in uh, COVID measures and keeping you know not every student in every every class in the hallways at the same time. Um, for our new grade eights next year, uh, and along with uh, grade nines, uh, they do attend school all day uh, and they are placed in cohorts to limit their contact with other students in, in, in the school and other grade eights. Uh, and again, this is just to ensure uh, safety. So as a result, you know, I just want to say grade sevens, um, you know, when you start grade eight, choosing your elective is really important because it, it does, uh, in this COVID kind of period, make schedules very, very, very specific. We cannot make changes. It's very hard because we have to keep you in those cohorts. Again, this is just a list of all of the adult professionals who will be in your lives to support success here at Burnaby South. Uh, we've got many, many different adult professionals here, as well as programs to support um, students who may require some learning support to our, our uh, ELL uh, students. This is a slide that just communicates to you folks how um, you know, Burnaby Spelth wants to stay connected to you and, and part of your lives and work with you. Uh, this is how we keep members of our community informed everything from putting things updating things on the school website twitter accounts um, emails blogs of course report cards um, obviously me the teacher and parent teacher interview events have been a little bit different uh, this year um, with the pandemic but it's something that we would normally do and hopefully we'll do in the following school year as well So if you um, are going to be attending Burnaby South because you currently live within um, our catchment, you don't actually have to do anything. If, uh, if your you're student is living in our catchment and attending an elementary school in our catchment, you're already pre-transitioned to Burnaby South. 
What I will add though is if you are moving into our catchment um, or maybe you live in our catchment but are not currently attending an elementary school in our catchment, I would suggest that you contact Burnaby South's administrative office uh, as soon as possible to uh, ensure that the, the pre-transitioning does get set up. You will have to do a separate uh, registration. If you live outside of Burnaby South's catchment but would like to attend Burnaby South, uh, you do have to complete a cross-district transfer uh, and the applications are all online. You can see on the um, PowerPoint here, the website for that. And the deadline for that application does come up quickly. It has to be received in the month of February. Uh, and applicants will be contacted um, you know, once we've received that application and are ready to move forward. If you do not live in Burnaby, but would still like to return, attend Burnaby South, similarly, you have to complete that form. Uh, it's an out of district transfer application. And similarly, uh, it must be completed and submitted between February 1st and 28th. And yeah, someone from the school district will contact you as well. Okay. So this is just a visual representation of myself and my colleagues in the Student Services Department. Uh, that's me on the top left, Mr. Chow. And I work with families and students with last names starting with A, B, and C, and D up to the letters D and E. I will also point out that that picture is a little bit older. So if you do meet me in person, um, try not to look too disappointed that I've um, I look a bit older now and let myself go. <laughs> so this next slide just speaks a little more uh, concretely about course selection and the course selection process. So we like to point out that you know, course planning and course selection is a very important process that occurs uh, in high school because A, it establishes what courses we will set up for students to take. In addition, it helps us determine, you know, what teachers and how many teachers to hire so that we are able to support the course selection uh, information that we receive. So grade sevens, you know, growing into grade eight, one of the things you can expect is you're going to have eight or more teachers, which is a little bit different from what you're probably uh, experiencing this year and in years past in your elementary schools. The workload does also increase because you're going to have more classes, separate teachers, and so, you know, successful students who make that transition develop really good work habits, organization, and time management, because you are going to have to juggle more things. One of the great things about coming to a school like Burnaby South, though, is there's a lot larger variety of things to do and be involved in. Okay? Everything from clubs, councils, sports teams, arts endeavors, okay? lots of things to, be part, uh, to take part in. So one of the things to point out is that you will be taking eight courses next year, grade sevens. As you can see here, um, you'll take English eight, math eight, science eight, social studies eight, French eight, and PE eight. Uh, applied skills, which is a combination uh, that you will have over an entire quarter. You'll do a little bit of home economics, technology education, and digital citizenship. You'll rotate through that through uh, 10 weeks in the quarter system. And then finally, uh, in grade eight, you do get that one elective as well. Okay. One of the things we like to point out is that when you're doing course selection, it's kind of like you're signing a contract <laughs> between yourselves and Burnaby South. So all of our, you know, our schools in Burnaby are staffed based on, um, on, on the course selection that is made. Okay. If we don't get enough students signing up for certain courses, we just don't offer those courses. So again, it's really important that you choose carefully, choose wisely, and that your alternate choices are also thought well thought out. Okay. Sometimes it's not possible for us to uh, give you your first choice in electives. Um, that's why we need to know what that backup plan is. We're always going to try and get you your first choice, but if we can't, we will work our way down and give our uh, give you your second choice. Um, rarely does it happen, but sometimes we have to resort to the third choice as well. And I'll also add that because of the cohort systems uh, with um, with 
you know, the response to the pandemic. Uh, it's often that whatever elective choice you pick, that you know, you're going to be with the same kind of group of, of students throughout. So um, just being mindful that whatever you choose will dictate how things go in your grade eight year. This is just a slide pointing out that you know we are not able to make changes in September. So please make sure that you choose wisely. This is what the grade eight course selection form looks like. It's a little bit different this year and I'll explain some of those differences a little bit further in this presentation. Okay. It's probably a little more simplified by ones um, we've done in years past, uh, just because there are just fewer choices to make. As I mentioned, grade eights have their um, fine art elective. So this is just an overview of what those elective choices are and what they entail. So there's art studio, there's a visual arts eight, and you can see the different kinds of topics and learnings that you might do. Media arts eight is also you know, a very arts based course, but it's usually uh, with, more with regards to using technology to create art, okay. more digitally focused. In addition, we have Date Dance Foundations 8. I want to be clear that it is beginner level, so if this is something you've always wanted to try, it's a really good place to start. You do not have to have had any experience learning dance in the past to do this. Drama 8, same kind of explanation there. It is an introductory, it's a beginning course, and you do not have to have had any experience with acting drama, okay? So we have a number of different music programs. So we have Concert Band Beginner, and that is for students who have had no experience in a band program. I know that in many elementary schools, um, you've been taking band for several years because they have those programs set up. And so that means you know, that would not be for you, but for someone who has had no experience, that would be the course to take. Concert Band Instrumental Music 8 would be for those with at least a year of band experience. Uh, also in the music kind of category, we have concert choir, choral music eight. Same idea here. You do not have to have any ex, you know, extensive experience with singing all right, to take this course. So for students who really have an interest in, um, in, in music particularly, we do offer for grade eights an opportunity to take an additional course outside the table, timetable, which means in the morning. Classes start at 7.30 in the morning, okay? but this would be for sort of advanced learning. So chamber choir uh, would be uh, if you have had a lot of experience and really enjoy um, choir. I'll also mention that it is a course uh, combined with students in grades 9, 10, 11, and 12. Similarly, orchestra, instrumental music 8 is um, multi-grade and for students who have a real passion and lots of experience with playing uh, a band or an orchestra type instrument and same thing as well it is a 7 30 a.m class so this is what a timetable looks like when you're in grade eight as you can see there are four quarters this student this uh, would have you know uh, concert music band uh, and math in quarter one and you can see how it would switch to quarters two and three in quarter three you can see how that student would have um, that combined uh, program uh, with digital citizenship home economics and technology so rotating through in 10 weeks those three different areas as i mentioned also we do offer a lot of sort of specialty courses um, for students, for example, who are ELL that require that additional language support and our learning assistance or LSS classes, uh, we have those options as well. Uh, we will be meeting with grade seven teachers and admin and counselors. And so if this is something that a student would be benefiting from, we would be having those discussions and we will sort of 
speak with families in pre-transition from there. Okay. Um, this is Mr. Lee, Mr. Amos Lee, and he heads up our honors and advanced learning programs. He would normally be uh, in part of this presentation if we were doing it in person as opposed to visually. And he'd be talking about honors programs at Burnaby South. So things have been a little bit different this year and will be different next year as well, in that we will not have specific you know, individualized honors classes. Instead, grade eights and nines um, who would like an honors designation for their classes, uh, they will indicate it in their course selection form that that's something they would want to do. And they will be given additional kind of honors enrichment activities by the subject teacher in the quarter that they're doing the course. So if you are interested in this, again, note it in your grade seven course selection form and be in touch with the teacher when you start at Burnaby South uh, to just, you know, get that enrichment content. And if you're successful with it, you will have uh, in your um, student kind of transcript, uh, it will be designated that you did an honors version of the course. I want to point out that you, know, you want to choose this if uh, it's a course area that you just have a real great interest or passion in and you want to learn more and, and have those in additional enrichment activities. Okay. This is Ms. Matsumura and she heads up um, one of two teachers in our career programs office. She's someone that you can reach out to if you are looking for more information about the academies that we have in Burnaby. Uh, there are two um, that are open to grade eight students. And I will point out that both of these programs would have uh, students attending school at Caribou Hill Secondary um, for the first year. So the first one I want to discuss is the DigiPen Game Development Academy. And this would be for students who are really interested in sort of video gaming um, and development, uh, are looking to maybe uh, interested in maybe a career or learning more in that area. The second is the Microsoft Office Specialist Certification. And so that would be obviously focusing on Microsoft um, technologies and software programs. And you actually get a certification at the end of that as well. The other academies that are um, offered are in the areas of sports. And the two sports specifically would be volleyball and lacrosse. So the volleyball academy is um, also at Caribou Hill Secondary. It would be for, for half of a year though. So you would not have to attend the whole year at Caribou Hill. The other, um, you would attend Burnaby South, but you would attend uh, lacrosse training and classes at SFU. It's a partnership between the Burnaby School District and SFU. There are fees for this program because it also accounts for um, just, uh, just equipment and training and um, other things associated with the programming. If you'd like more information about these programs um, for the DigiPen and uh, Microsoft Office Specialist Certification, uh, you'd want to contact Ms. Matsumura, Laverne Matsumura. Her email is right there. Okay. Uh, you can also uh, contact Andy Chin, who's the principal at Caribou Hill, particularly with regards to the volleyball program and the lacrosse academy as well. So being the great parents that you are, you want to you know, support your child as they transition to grade eight at, you know, in high school. And it can be a big transition for students and parents alike. Uh, one of the ways that you can support them is just make sure that they get into routines. Uh, routines around work habits, routines around when they do homework, okay. and really emphasizing the importance of work habits. One of the things I can tell you anecdotally is that, you know, students, they do well, um, you know, they're, 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 when they, they, 
they have great work habits. I can't think of any time where I've had a student that has had a G for work habits and has not been successful in a course. So work habits are the foundation for success. Ensuring that um, children have a quiet and comfortable place for them to study and do their homework is really key, particularly if they have uh, siblings or just other distractions, putting technology away that's not required for that study process. And just ensuring that they have organization through different binders. That's a little bit easier in the quarter system because they'll only have two courses. You can maybe have, you know, one binder for the two classes. But keeping their work, you know, separated and, and neat is important. Encouraging responsibility. Because students have uh, eight or more teachers, okay, um, you're not going to have one teacher that can sort of see the big picture of things. So it's going to be incumbent upon grade sevens going into grade eight to organize themselves using an agenda or an electronic device to you know, write down key due dates for things, things they can prepare, what their homework is, remind themselves when they have to attend tutorials, okay? and really just taking initiative and asking for help when needed. One of the good things about being having a grade seven teacher is they see the big picture really easily because they see students every day, all day. At high school, that's not the case, and teachers might not be able to, you know, be as proactive because they just won't be able to spend as much time with students. Another way to support your child is to make sure that if they are absent, you please call the, the school and, and let us know if they're sick or there's a orthodontist appointment or something like that. Okay. And then making sure that when they return, that they check in with teachers for anything that they may have missed. So where do we go from here? Well, um, counselors, myself and my colleagues, we've been completing uh, virtual presentations with our elementary schools in our catchment. Uh, some have already happened. The rest are going on this week. And course selection forms have been sent to those elementary schools and students should be getting them and bringing them home. Uh, looking them over students and parents and ensuring that they go back to their uh, grade seven teacher by Friday, February 5th. After that, um, not much will be going on <laughs> with this. Uh, we will send course verifications back to uh, the elementary school sometime in May. And that's an opportunity to, for you to review what you've chosen. And if you want to make changes, that would be the time to do it. Uh, once you have verified those um, that information, you can send it back to the school and they will then send it back to us at Burnaby South. If you've not been to it, I um, just want to point out that one of the great ways to find out more about Burnaby South is to go to our website. It's updated regularly. You can you know, go ahead of time. You're in grade seven right now, but you can see the kinds of things that we do at Burnaby South. Uh, parents, you can use it to navigate ways of you know, getting teachers emails if you need to reach out to them or you know their counselors or admin. We're here to help you. Um, Burnham South's counseling department, um, we have our own blog as well. And our department head, Jackie Finn, does a really great job of updating it. Uh, lots of information there as well. Check it out. So it's not just all about studying and schoolwork and whatnot. Uh, Burnaby South Rebels are very involved in the school community and outside the community as well. Um, if we weren't in a pandemic, <laughs> we would have, you know, many, many different clubs going on. We actually have had very create, creative uh, club leaders um, ensuring that their clubs have been operating in socially distant and safe ways. And, and they've certainly still been getting involved just differently. You may have also been aware of, you know, Burnaby South's tremendous success in athletics um, over the years. And that's something that I'm hoping we'll be able to look forward to and getting back to normal, uh, moving into uh, the, the school year starting in September. But we'll have to see where we're at with the pandemic in that regard. Also, uh, you know, it's something that we do is just lunchtime intramurals, which are a lot of fun. Um, again, hopefully the pandemic allows for this, uh, but just different ways to get involved and, and, and be part of the school community and have some fun. 
in summary here um, just a couple of things that I want to put out there is just pointing out that timelines uh, you're probably have experienced or will be experiencing some virtual presentations you're on one right now <laughs> thank you for joining us with that um, course selection forms are due February 5th to grade 7 teachers And in summary as well, you know, why you might be choosing Burnaby South. And, and we thank you for choosing us, if that is a choice that uh, uh, that you're consciously making here. Um, we're a great school. We will, we're a large school, which allows for a diversity of programs. We do a lot of really great things, again, artistically, academically, creatively. Um, our AP Honors programs are, are virtually unmatched. We're one of only five schools in BC that run AP Capstone. We have lots of different diversity, both culturally and language options at the school to learn. Uh, we're very involved in our community. Our clubs are incredible in how they uh, contribute to humanitarian and environmental issues. We have strong mentorship programs here at South, peers helping peers, uh, teachers helping to develop leadership with students. Teachers are very um, active and involved in their tutorials as well, helping students either outside of class time or in the tutorial time offered in the quarterly system. Lots of extracurricular programs and ways to get involved. We promote active citizenships amongst our students, uh, preparing them with uh, the skills they, they need to be successful uh, as human beings, as leaders in the future. Finally, we also advocate just a personalized learning. We um, we meet students where they're at and work with them to ensure that they have their success. So if you have any questions about um, things that I've discussed today, I invite you to um, contact myself or one of the other counselors. Uh, again, we, we do divide by last name. These are our email addresses. As I mentioned, Amos Lee is our coordinator of AP Honors and Enrichment. He's a really great person to contact as well. I mentioned some of the district programs and lacrosse volleyball academies and technology programs, uh, ACIT programs. Ms. Matsumura is a wonderful person to contact with regard to that as well. Additionally, for more information, I mentioned the school website earlier. Um, please visit the department pages, scroll around. Um, uh, you know, reach out to teachers if you have questions uh, next year. Uh, get in contact with us. Uh, we want to work with you. For those of you who might have uh, children or uh, who are already attending Burnaby South in different graves, we do have another virtual presentation specifically for those grades, and you can access them like you access this one off our school website. We really look forward to seeing you all, uh, <laughs> hopefully in person, not just virtually. Uh, but yeah, you know, we're looking forward to, to working with our, our school communities, parents, families, our new grade seven students, and ensuring that you have uh, success and are a vital part of the Burnaby South community. Thank you so much for being part of this presentation today. Thank you very much for uh, listening and um, we wish you well and look forward to having you.